of St. Mark's Episcopal Cathedral. Because we were often trying to share the cognitive distillations of experiences of God uh, and experiences of faith, and to give young people the, the, the propositional statements and, and, um, and some of the conclusions of those, those uh, per periods of uh, faith of the past. And at least in the Catholic tradition, there's a complete disconnect with that. Where they end up engaging is at the level of the heart. And so somehow we've got to reimagine religious education with, with the young. Um, we have to reimagine it by taking a, a, a distance that I like to refer to as the longest 18 inches we travel between, the 18 inches between our head and our heart, and somehow try to reimagine the whole enterprise. When you start talking about adults, I think it becomes much more of a complex type of a, of a discussion because many of us are already formed. We've already made up our ideas. We have the media, as Danny says so well, and he beats up on the media for the first, about the first uh, 35 or 40 pages of the book, which is a former journalist. I'm completely, it resonates with me completely. <laughs> I got absolutely, I agree with everything you say. Um, but I, I, I think with, with older, people, one, one of the challenges we're going to have is trying to find what Robert Bella, the sociologist, referred to as a civic religious language, or a civil religious language. I also like to refer to it as a civic spirituality, or, or a civil spirituality. We have to somehow learn how to re-articulate the sacred truths that, that our ancestors have handed on to us, and that we have, we've ended up uh, embracing in our own life. We have to reinterpret it in a way which I think Rand, uh, which I, I think Danny's trying to do here with his spirit at the center of being and spirit at the center of our ideology. We have to reimagine a language for being able to communicate those truths that somehow distance those insights from the historical encrustations and the institutional patina that seems to surround them. It's a very difficult process, I know, but we have, in the past century, two people who did it very well. One was a theologian, Martin Luther King, and the other was an attorney who read a lot of theology, Mohandas Gandhi. They both understood the symbols of their culture well enough, and they had enough grounding in their own personal spirituality where they were able to find a language that ended up connecting with people. I think Barack Obama, has done that in some profound ways. But I have two concerns, and I'll conclude with this, because right now we are, there are signs that we're moving toward the middle. <clears throat> those, are, those are very positive signs, and I hope they hold. But there's, there's a couple of uh, uh, people who have written recently about the, the extent of the divisions in our, in our nation, in our culture, they give me pause and makes me think that there is some urgency for us to be able to cultivate the civil, religious, civil spirituality language. A, a fellow by, uh, who is a Beltway journalist, Ronald uh, Brownstein, wrote a book a number of years ago called The Second Civil War, and he analyzed how the, the United States moved from an age of bargaining uh, after World War II up to about the 1970s to when Newt Gingrich showed up at the House of Representatives in 1979, we started moving into an age of what he refers to as hyper-partisanship. And he kind of outlines how the whole political system ended up becoming kind of a slash and burn affair and a, a, a kind of a, a winner-take-all, and no compromise was brooked within, within each party. What concerns me is that democratic leadership also kind of matured under this playbook. So when things start getting tough, and if the economy doesn't roll around quickly, we're going to end up having more tension and problems, and we're, we're more likely to revert back to that political this divisiveness that, that has held us hostage for 30 years. There's also a journalist in, in Texas, a fellow by the name of Bill Bishop, who wrote an interesting book just a couple of years ago. Um, uh, he was at LA Bay, I think right before the election, this last election. A fellow by the name of Bill Bishop. And he wrote a book called The Big Sort. And if you're familiar with this, Bishop's uh, um, thesis is that what's happened over the past uh, 10 years is that every year 10 million Americans have relocated for a total of 100 million over the past 10 years. And they've relocated into little hives 
of similar thinking people. And Bishop's thesis is that um, <clears throat> this all happened mostly unconsciously. That if I'm a liberal and I'm driving around looking for a place to settle, if I see fleece and Birkenstocks and people walking dogs in parks, I'm more likely to settle there because it feels more like home. If, I'm, if I tend to be more of a conservative and I'm driving around the neighborhood and I see lots of steeples and churches and other uh, obvious indications that there's a lot of people of faith in the neighborhood, I'll end up settling there as well. And so he sees the country as having divided into, at the city county level more than the state level, into these little hives of, of like minded thinking people. I think one of the opportunities we have as it becomes clear that us getting out of this soup that we're all in, one of the opportunities we have as people of faith and, and, and leaders of faith communities is to make those places um, locations in which conversations across the divides can happen. I like what Marcel tried to do here. They just have the wrong people. Now, they wouldn't have had as much media if they had it right. But the, but the reality is, is that there's, there's a happy medium here somehow. And as someone who works at a university, I would like to have high-level conversations and use polysyllables to describe what I want to do all the time. But, um, but unfortunately, um, if I want to connect with the culture, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I see that as our biggest challenge. And I think if we, if we can figure out a way to do that, by putting spirit at the center of our being and our ideology in a way that will engage the culture and allow people within the culture who are in this area where they don't know exactly where they, what they believe, if we can somehow get them into conversations and allow them to talk and we can listen to them, I think together we might find a way out of this kind of inability to be able to, we seem to be able to, uh, to transcend. Um, I moved here from the south where, the, the, where everyone's in church on Sunday. You have four generations of New Orleanites sitting in the pews. Now, three generations don't know why they're there. They're only there because if they don't come there, they don't get to go have grandma's gumbo after the service is over. And, and I think in some ways, this conversation, we can lead it here in this part of the country because we're about 30 or 40 years ahead of the rest of the nation. So I really have high hopes that, that we not only can have this conversation locally, but we can eventually end up getting CNN to cover it, hopefully with some people who know what they're talking about. Um, if we end up doing our groundwork over the next three or four years, um, because it's going to become more apparent now that we have put, uh, states on the East Coast that are stuck to catch up with us, that will eventually trickle into the Midwest. I have that doubt. Thank you very much. We're going to continue in a few moments with a uh, working lunch uh, downstairs, working in the sense that uh, we'll have an opportunity to speak, to interact, to talk about some of this, and I'm going to give you, of course, not just food for the belly, but food for thought. So uh, a study guide from the book that I've uh, created for it that I'd like you to both utilize, but also evaluate as to whether you think it would be helpful in adult education with, uh, with your folks. But just uh, a few um, thoughts and questions before we go downstairs. And then at the very end downstairs, we're going to wrap up uh, together with a couple more leading questions. Yes, please. Well, 